Welcome to game number four of the third Newcomers Tournament Group C. I'm your host, Philothenic, with my co-host, Blues. And we have four players, Bogus Rogus, Pablo, Scott Call, and Spry5. Well, what do you think about this map, Blues? I am going to say I would be very concerned about aluminum. Very little aluminum on the map. It's starting double price. And all the good aluminum's kind of far away from good stuff. There is maybe one right. scavenger found in the south that you can sort of work with. Yes, that one scavenger found there. The iron is awkwardly on the right side of the map. Right, Not miles away from the aluminum. The silicon is all on the top left corner, and um, all our players don't know exactly what to do with this map. Oh, blue grabbing very standard robot. God call grabbing the scavenger. I wonder if you might like that scavenger spot the best. Yeah, definitely. It's nice and central. It has good access to the aluminum, to this water. It's not too far away from the silicon either. I'm not sure what Spryfly is getting up to with this robotic found. He is going to be shipping in iron from down there. I suppose he crushed a fair amount of aluminum. It gets him up to HQ2 a bit sooner. Mm. But I wonder if it wouldn't have just been better to found near the iron. Bogus Rogue is trying, figuring if he's going to ship long distance, might as well go expansive with that sh slight shipping bonus. That is sort of a reasonable decision. It just depends on how he approaches aluminum. Mm -hmm. All of our players hit level two, except for Bogus Rogue, who is the last to be found. And so my tongue doesn't get tripped up, I'm just going to call him Rogus. That is fair enough. Scott Call going into this water and two reactors, both oxygen and fuel starting double. This is going to make a lot of money for him. Yeah, power started standard price, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem at level two. It Perhaps is a power colony, it. but with glass starting cheap, he should be able to move through this upgrade. UHG3 reasonably quickly. Does have half of the glass purchased for that upgrade already. Pablo's also hitting level two, has decided to double down on steel production, grabbed a carbon tile instead of an aluminum tile. That seems like a mistake to me. Um, maybe. To be fair, the aluminum would be very and a low. Right, I would be very concerned about power if I were going to uh, try to ship in aluminum. I think taking there the carbon a... maybe sets Pavlos up for a wind transition on HQ3. There is a low aluminum tile directly to the north of Pavlos, though. It's an option. I guess it can also become a wind turbine and maybe use some power adjacency to help it out. I guess I like that a lot more than I initially thought. Pablo's second to level three. Scott Call beating him to level three, like we said on the. Um, what I'm Charles worried about with Scott right. Call is that he's going to water and food, ignoring this power still. I think this is the one thing that could really sink him this game. Otherwise, he was just in a very strong position. We uh, haven't really mentioned Spry Fry since they've founded, reached level three on this uh, interesting found. He's definitely dick. playing a part in driving up this power price, but he's also grabbing some silicon now. Maybe he can make that work. Also has some carbon, a high carbon that's shipping in. Yeah, I'll I think the carbon definitely up. feels like a mistake to me after maybe Pavlos and Scott Cole have all that carbon coming in. Maybe just taking a second aluminum tile instead, or silicon earlier, or just a geotherm. Just something to deal with the power situation. This geotherm for 18,000 seems quite reasonable pickup by Pavlos. Um, on the one hand, yes. It's not a lot of debt to pay for it. It's going to be a very important tile, and it's not exorbitantly expensive for him to put down. He does already have a goon secured. 
What I am concerned with is that it's going to be a lot of debt in the moment, and I don't know where pa uh, Pavlos is going to be making money until maybe he can try to go for power money. Right. If I'm Pavlos, Pavlos has three claims. I want to take... I would use that core samples to pick up a high claim is a excellent play. Yeah, that worked nicely for sure. Oh, and, getting uh, very lucky with the second core sample as well with this high water. The uh, RNG gods are favoring, favoring Pavlos this game. Unlike last game, making up the things a bit. So I do like those both of those moves. He has one more claim. I to would pick. like a second Geo. Yes, second geo right down beneath his base. That's what I'd go for. Scott Call has bumped up to number four. Right, managed HP4. to get there before things really got out of control. Going into these, all these wind turbines will be great for him, except that they're not defended. Power surges and circuit overloads are available. So as long as someone right. catches this. Now, uh, Spy, Spry Fry has given a free mutiny to Pavlos, but then Pavlos uses it against Spryfy instead of Scott Call, which is what I would have preferred to have seen. Now, we haven't talked about Bogus Rogus much. Bogus Rogus has been lagging behind a little bit, finally hit HQ level 3, and when I look at Bogus Rogus's base, I see too much shipping going on. Yeah, it was going to be something that had to happen based on where he found it, but not, not getting the silicon that he's not using for anything, getting this carbon that not using for anything, I would skip those. The other shipping is, yes, all understandable. Yeah, I think that's maybe one thing you can say about uh, the less experienced players. Um, picking up carbon seems to be something they like to do on HQ3, HQ4. And generally, you can kind of just skip carbon for a long time. You're not going to be making chemicals or electronics most of the time until the late game. Uh, Bogus Rogus is in chemicals, and they will be doing good things for him. But yes. he's also just not making life support. Life support is not significantly less uh, profitable. And it's... We have interrupt we have an aggressive move by scott call into spry fry and scott call does have the money for this majority buy yeah that's just a lot of this power never getting shut down until just now a lot of power money flowing in along with all this excellent life support money that he's been making all game spry fry unfortunately does not have the money to defend themselves and will be the second majority buy that we've seen this tournament any moment by Scott Call. Yeah, Spryfly made several pretty solid decisions, but maybe just being a little overwhelmed by the shipping cost debt and maybe taking this carbon and a few other things, costing him a couple of claims that he could have used. This puts Scott Call in a nice commanding position in this game right now. Right. The Once these competitor to Scott Call perhaps is Pavlos, and Pavlos is having difficulty making money. One thing I neglected to point out earlier: Scott Call did build this patent lab right as he hit HQ4. I believe his first move was for the superconductor, planning on making this power play, which is definitely just an excellent idea, and it really paid off. The only mistake really, in this whole play, is that he never defended this power adequately. Right. Didn't defend the power adequately, and other players didn't attack it early enough. Right. So getting lucky there. Bogus Rogus over here hits HQ4, one HQ behind Scott Call, equal with Pavlos. And he's producing more money than Pavlos, at least until that power surge. And the other thing you could say about what's going on with Pavlos is committed very heavily into power, which has 
effectively paid off almost all his debt. But you really can understand how that early 50k in debt impeded this power play. As whereas Scott Cole had much less debt, and he really got an advantage off of that. Right. No, Scott Cole, I'm sorry, Pavlos will finally be making power money, earning until that freeze, uh, just under 2k a second, now just operating off the double geotherms at just under 500 a second for Pavlos. Scott Call is still being, uh, his power is still being hit, which is a good call by Pavlos. Scott does have one goon squad here. I'd like to see them put it up on one of these wind turbines. I can't really figure out which one is the best. Yeah, Might that, as well put it on the one that's not currently overloaded. That's both the most likely to get hit, I think. And just, it's very strong tile and it's not affected right now. So good choice there. I do have to wonder a bit about placing this pleasure dome down when you already have this patent lab tile that could very easily become a pleasure dome. It, mm -hmm. It's probably fine, but maybe having that extra claim as a scavenger could be useful. But he does still have this very large lead, and it's hard to see any of these things costing him all that much. No, Pavlos finally hits level five on the back of the power play. Now, what he needs to do, he is behind. Probably not going to get much help from Bogus Rogus, although Bogus Rogus does have 78k. Pavlos needs to move into something else that makes money. I think part of the problem here is that uh, if Pavlos and Bogus Rogus really wanted a chance to get back into this game, they needed to work together to get aggressive majority by Scott Call when they could. By taking mm -hmm. this upgrade, by taking all this extra defensive stock, they are really kind of just entrenching themselves into a longer game when Scott Call has subsidiary already pulling in so much money right and consolidating that subsidiary making yeah, his stock more expensive an excellent move by him maybe you would have liked to see him push into some of his own stock simultaneously so he's not costing himself extra money to defend himself later but not a still major thing the, still has the option 82k in the bank if they wanted to. From here, I actually might, I don't know, I'll contradict myself and say maybe I wouldn't even think about defending myself as Scott Call. Maybe I would do exactly what he's doing right now go for this really cheap buy on Bogus Rogus. Pavlos can't really effectively threaten you. He's 250k, 200k short, somewhere in that area. So mm -hmm. you can pick up Bogus Rogus very cheaply. You can turn around and start attacking Pavlos too before you're in any real danger. Pavlos is doing the correct response um, to this buy as best as he can. He has three auto off farms that Pavlos just re recognized this and is switching them over into a metal mine. Right, I would feel like what Pavlos is doing is too little too late, but it is definitely what he needs to be doing. He also needs to sell out of the rest of his own stock. He, and he really needed Bogus Rogers to help out because they right. do still have enough. They could have finished the buy together. At the very least, Bogus Rogers buying into a uh, Scott call would have delayed that buy a little, given Pavlos a little more time to try to make this work. Yes, the problem with those sorts of plays is it takes uh, two to tango. Right, and it's definitely not a straightforward thing to think about. It's something that maybe requires more experience to notice that sort of opening. And since we do discourage chatting in the game, it makes coordinating a little bit harder. 
At this point, I think Scott Cole really needs to be pushing into Pavlos's stock. Just discourage this from going on. Because while well, he's not really threatened yet, it's not long until he starts really feeling threatened. Force mm-hmm. Pavlos to sell out now before you're forced to try to scurry to your own defense. Pavlos making good use of the core sample, getting a bunch more water while water is really high. Yeah, also getting quite lucky, getting a bunch of double tiles, a second high water. Alright, so Scott needs... Scott has 123k, but a lot of that money is in this off-world. 128. He doesn't cancel this off world. He could be in a lot of trouble. And by a lot of trouble, you mean could lose the game. Yeah. Basically. Because Scott Pablo's only needs 70k to finish this buy. Needs 60 more k, while Scott needs another 140k and currently has 123k on hand. But a lot of that is in this off world. So this could have a much more exciting finish than we might have first anticipated. And remember that Pavlos does still have the option of selling out of this stock he bought in himself. So yes. he doesn't really need all Pavlos that much more cash. He should sell out of that one stock and finish the game right here, right now. Every, Pavlos does sell a stock, has the buy. That is quite the upset. Scott for Scott's mistake in not defending himself and building that off world. I think he made the correct aggressive moves, but he didn't, he wasn't able to follow it up appropriately. And he ended up doing just enough to make, leave himself vulnerable. It's really unfortunate. It is. Um, yeah, after that upset upset victory by Pavlos, that sort of changes what you're going to say at the end of the game. You have to reprocess a little bit. Um, Pavlos did, like we said multiple times already, making use of Core Sample, which is a underused black market item in this game. Pavlos managed to get exactly what he wanted off those core samples. Exactly what he needed and the only person to use core sample, buying it four times for 15k more than paid for itself, I think. To be fair, uh, at least Scott Cole in particular had no real reason to use core samples. He had great access to all resources. Scott Cole had the best founding location, everything that he needed. Spry Fry, I'm not sure what Spry Fry would have used the core sample for. I think his found was an interesting idea, just trying to crush a lot of aluminum, take advantage of the early high price, but I don't think it was worthwhile. I think it cost him too much moving forward there. And then Bogus Rogus. Um, By the point he founded, there were just no good choices. There were none. I mean, there there was theoretically this power robot, but that's really difficult to make work sometimes. The power robot might have been possible. With the power Um, colony, I think it would have worked nicely. Silicon started high, you could crush a lot of silicon, push to H2 too quickly, get a bunch of solar panels up, and I think you're set up pretty nicely. The only issue with that was power started at normal price. Right. But I think, I mean, so, normal price isn't really a problem, I think. No. It would have been a slower power robot, but it probably it would, probably would have been better than the expansive found. Um, to be fair, power robot is one of those founds that uh, it's a little bit harder to pull off. Right. Than... It's unconventional. It requ- requires a different approach than most of your other plays. 
often with a power robot you can start up really quick and then if you don't make the correct mid-game transitions you can just sort of putter out and die right and it it's also just so uh, reliant on other people helping you out by selling down your steel correct uh, let's see when when i would have found it there would have been two robots on so could have it could have worked this game. It would have worked this game. All right. Well, I believe that's everything I have on this game. Indeed. Not much more to say than that surprise ending. Just uh, make sure to defend yourself before going to the off world. I mean, I was talking during the game about how I liked his decision to be so aggressive, but it was maybe pushing it a little without being able to uh, finish it cleanly. And sometimes just that last bit can be the most difficult.